over us? Yes, sweetheart. I do. Is there anything you want to say to them before we go? I love you. And I miss you every day. Why don't you go on ahead? I'll be there in a minute, okay? It's wrong to leave you here, Willie. And I know that you and Kathy will look after each other. And no matter how far away I am, you will always be in my heart. I'll see you again. to see my sister and her husband. Who are you going to visit? We're not visiting anyone. We're going to live with my grandpa and grandma. You're leaving home? My pa is the sheriff at Tetsford Junction. He got himself killed a couple years back. Gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. with every year. Do you really think so, Grandma? I really do, sweetie. I bet you're hot and thirsty. There's fresh churned buttermilk inside. All right. <laughs> oh. Welcome home, Missy. It's good to be home, Mama. I just wish I know. I know. All right, let's see what you do now. You move. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's been practicing. Yes, I have. Your father found you a house in town. It's small and it needs some work, but it's near the school and the rent is reasonable. Good. Well, my teachers pay. I can't afford much. I really wish you'd reconsider staying with us. At least for a little while. Do you need the help, Mama? No. I really appreciate you and Papa wanting to help me and Maddie. 
But I need to stand on my own two feet right now. Maddie needs to see that even though his daddy's gone, he still has one parent strong enough to take care of him. The other day, Maddie asked me what color his father's eyes were. I couldn't remember. Maddie might forget details like that. But he won't forget the things his father did with him. Or the things Willie taught him. I'm starting to forget little things about Willie, too. Like that last morning, when we said goodbye, did I kiss him? I, I think I did, but I don't remember. It's only been three years, Mama. Just like with Maddie, you'll remember the things that mattered. Like how much you and Willie loved each other. No one will ever love me that way again. And I will never love anyone else. I can't imagine being truly happy again. That's how I felt when my first husband died. And then I met your father. See, I feel if I were to love someone else, that I would be betraying Willie in some way. Willie would want you to be happy. It's going to take a little bit of work, but I can help you out with that message. It's all right, Pa. It's going to be just fine. Daddy, look what I found. It's our Christmas star. I promise you, Maddie, I will make this into a nice place. It won't be like home, though. Do you know what makes a house a home? No. Home is where you'll always have a place, where you will always feel loved, and where you will never, ever be alone. It might not seem like it now, Maddie, but... This place will come to feel like home. Come here. Oh Lord, how manifold are your works. We thank you for the sun and the rain, which help nourish the crops and help them grow into sustenance for our minds and bodies. In wisdom you have made them all. Amen. Amen. I have an announcement. I received this notice from the Children's Aid Society of New York, and it says, Wanted. Homes for children. A company of homeless children from the East will arrive on Friday. These children are of various ages and of both sexes, having been thrown friendless upon the world. We seek good homes with decent families who will love them as their own. Distribution of these children will take place right here at the church. I know I can count on all of you to open your hearts to these precious children of God. God bless you all. Pastor Joe. Uh, well, I've heard a lot about you, Missy. Oh, well, good, I trust. Your father thinks the world of you. Seems we're neighbors. My husband and I are just two farms away from your new house. All right, see you tomorrow morning. Pastor? Oh, Mrs. Pastor. Morning, Sheriff. We should miss you at Sunday services today. Come on now. Clara. He should be coming, honey. Well, that's his choice now. I know. I know. We'll see you. Bye. Sheriff Tyler couldn't be bothered to attend church again. Well, he's pretty busy keeping the peace. It's Sunday. Thanks, Mrs. <laughs> We should be going, Mrs. Pettis. Well, it looks like your husband had a reason for not showing his face in church as well. Thank you. There is much work to be done on the farm, and we can't afford hired help. If my husband doesn't do the work, we don't eat come winter. Good day, ma'am. 
I'm Sheriff Tyler. Hello, Sheriff. I'm Mrs. LeHay. Yes, I know. Small town, word gets around. I heard about the new teacher. Well, what else have you heard? Well, your folks are Clark and Marty Davis, and you have a, a little boy. Maddie. Maddie. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mrs. LeHay. You spoil him. Of course I do. It's my job as a grandma. So tell me more about this orphan train Pastor Joe was talking about. Now, Marty, you know you're not well enough to be chasing after a child. It will be soon. Well, for now, we're going to have to let other people handle that responsibility. Would you consider taking in one of those children? Yeah, Mom. Then I get to have a brother or sister. No. But all my friends have a bunch of brothers and sisters. But since Kathy died, I've had none. I'm sorry, Mama. It's all right, Maddie. It's good to talk about her. We don't want to forget her, right? Get away from me. Folks don't want a brother and sister. Stop in and see how it was going. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming today. These children are putting their faith in the kindness of strangers like you. Let's begin with Alice Moore. Alice, you want to come up here next to me? Come on. Alice is seven years old. She was orphaned when her parents died in an influenza epidemic. She's the same age as Lily was when we lost her. Do you think that we can... May we take Alice aside and get acquainted with her pastor? You certainly may. Why don't you go with these nice folks? Jonas Sykes is nine years old. His parents were killed three years ago in a fire. Oh, he's such a nice boy. Ruth Lind is five years old. She was left on the doorstep of the Battery Park Orphanage as an infant. Well, I'm sure, sir. Let's do it. Next is Belinda Marshall. She's 14 years old. We need a boy. Boy's too young and scrawny. She's older. She looks like she could handle herself on a farm. I'll look her over past her. See if she might do. Open your mouth. Why? I want to make sure you're healthy. Very <laughs> spirited, huh? That's all right. Means you're tough. You'll be a good worker. We'll take her. I'm not going with you. You smell. You probably haven't had a bath for a year. Watch your mouth, girl. 
She's incorrigible. He looks healthy enough. We'll take him. He looks like he'll grow into a good farm hand. That isn't the point, Hank. I thought the point was to find homes for these youngins. Anyone else here want them? If he comes with us, he gets a decent home with plenty of good food. And I'll see he comes to church. The choice is yours, Jacob. You don't have to go with him. Would you rather go back to the orphanage? No. All right, then. Sign a paper, Sheriff. Come here, boy. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Someone can find room for her. Oh, my house is small. There's barely enough room for me and Maddie. I'm Missy LaHaye. I'm the school teacher here, and I have a little boy. I can't offer you much. No fancy dolls or store bought dresses, but. Come to live with me, I'll treat you kindly. Okay? I'll take that as a yes. Welcome to your new home. This is Belinda Marshall. She's going to be living with us. For how long? Just tell him old enough to leave. Not a day longer. Let's just say for the foreseeable future. And we'll leave it at that for now. You can put your things over here. Um, I'll make up a bed over here and, and I'll hang some curtains around it for some privacy. I'd rather sleep in the shed. Oh, no. It's too dirty and lots of broken down old furniture and stuff. I don't care. I'll fix it up myself. Uh, Maddie, will you go over to Mrs. Hudson's and ask her if we can borrow her spare mattress? Just for a while. Belinda, I would like for you to stay in the house with me and Maddie. Why? Because this is your home now. Belinda, and we're your family. You're not my family. I've got a papa back in New York. He'll be coming for me as soon as he gets a job. I won't be staying here long. So I don't think I will. This should do for now. At least until it turns cold. your family Bible? Is something your parents gave you? No. We each got one at the orphanage. Have you read much of it? Maybe we could read a passage tonight after supper. No. What grade are you in, Belinda? No grade. I mean, in New York, what's the last grade that you finished? First. That's as far as you've gotten in school? I had work to do. There was no time for school. Belinda, can you read? What if I can't? Doesn't matter. Don't need to know how to read to sweep a floor, or bake biscuits, or wash clothes. But books open up a whole world to you. They teach you things like how much an African elephant weighs, or how Betsy Ross came to make the first flag. And why would I need to know any of those things? 
Well, it's not just facts and history. There are stories that touch your heart and make your imagination soar. And books can take you anywhere. You could uh, go to China or be in the court of Queen Elizabeth. I'm going outside. Hey there. Mama, Papa, this is Belinda. Welcome to the family, Belinda. We hope that you'll come to think of us as your grandparents. I'm not your granddaughter. We're not trying to take the place of your other grandparents. We just think a child can't have too many people who love her. Do you have grandparents back in New York? No, and I don't need none either. Well, I think it's just about time to sit down to supper. Belinda. What? We say grace first. Belinda, do you know what that is? Of course I do. We had to pray over our food at the orphanage. I don't know why. No, it's important. We're very fortunate. A lot of people go hungry. I bet I know that a lot better than you do. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything that you have given us. Especially for the new member of our family, Belinda. Amen. 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 Down in the barn. Do you want to come? No. Well, if you change your mind, oh. you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, you big girl boy. <laughs> I'll beat you to the barn. <laughs> For the life of me, I don't know what possessed me to take in that child. I sure didn't need any more responsibility. Then why did you? I didn't intend to, but when I rode past the church that day, something stopped me. And then when I heard Pastor Joe say, will someone take this child? It, it was as if another voice came out of me saying, I will. Maybe it was another's voice. You think God was speaking through me? I think God knew that Belinda needs you. And maybe for some reason that you don't understand yet, you need her. I think he makes a nice hat. Snowball. <laughs> there you
rising nicely. If I get the Perrys, can I use your oven to bake some pies? Pies? Of course. Is that one of your favorites, berry pie? Not mine. My mother's. Belinda's gonna bake us some fruit pie. That's nice. What's the matter, Clark? I gotta take care of something for the Fletcher widow. Go back inside, Belinda. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna have to. I'm coming with you. Fletcher widow's horse broke loose. He fell in a gully and broke his leg. She asked me to put him down for her. You're gonna shoot an innocent animal? Because it needs doing. Now please, go back inside. God, listen to me. I'll check his leg. If I can save his life, I will. But if bone is shattered, would you rather I leave him out here to be eaten alive by coyotes and wolves? We're here, child. better. Squishy ones are the hard ones. Sorry, Mama. That's all right, sweetheart. Uh, will you take him inside? 
Come on, little fella. Come on, Belinda. I don't think it's too bad. It led a lot, but it's not broken. Thank you, Sheriff. Oh, I didn't do anything. She managed to get him into town. Thank you, Belinda. I'll go get a towel and a bowl of water. Missy told me about how you took care of Maddie. How did you know how to get the bleeding to stop? My mama taught me stuff. She used to be a midwife, so she knew all about fixing people. At the orphanage, there were 300 kids and only one nurse. So I helped out. Did you like doing that? Yeah. It made me feel good. Belinda, have you ever thought about becoming a nurse? <laughs> me, a nurse? I don't think so. Why not? Someone like me can't do something like that. What do you mean, someone like you? You know, poor. Plain old poverty can't keep you from doing something you really want to do. Only poverty of spirit can do that. My mom always wanted to be a nurse. But she never got the chance to. Your mama was never able to pursue her dream. I think she'd be very proud if you were able to do something she couldn't. No matter how early we leave, we are always running late. Is that why we're always running? What's the matter with you, boy? We ain't got money to go wasting on your clumsiness. Hello, Mr. Pettis. This is Lay. Jacob only tripped. It was an accident. Money's tight, Mrs. LaHaye. A couple more accidents might well put me in a poorhouse. And you might want to keep an eye on your own numbers. Let's go. Why not? Nobody likes you. That's why. You're just a no-account orphan. You take a hot fire! Oh. All right, that's enough. I said that's enough. Now, someone want to tell me what happened here? You and I go over here and talk. But it wasn't my fault! I didn't start it! I know that Steven's boy well enough to be pretty sure he did or said something mean. You want to tell me what that was? Why? Must have been pretty bad if you don't want to say. He just... He wouldn't let me play as all. Well. It's hard being the outsider. In fact, I imagine your whole life's pretty hard right now. But you can't give up, Belinda. I can run faster than all of them. I bet you can. Why don't you go back there and show them? Go on. Go! I cannot run any of you. No, you can't. You're a girl. Yeah, and you're a stupid bully, but I can still outrun you. You want to get beat bad? Come on in. What's around the old oak? Ready, set, go! Recess is over. <laughs>
my team, okay? Good job. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that something just happened and you were a part of it? Nothing I couldn't handle, ma'am. If I were you, I'd keep an eye on that Belinda. If she does run, you're not going to catch her. Smells really good. You gotta hide it from them. I'll put it under my bed. I'll try to bring something better tomorrow night. I hate it here, Lindy. He hits me and she yells at me. I don't want to stay. I have to come live with you. I don't know how Mrs. Lehe would feel about that. And even if she were okay with it, Mr. and Mrs. Pettis probably wouldn't let her take you. I miss you something off. Let's run away from here right now. Jacob, you know we can't leave. Even if we could leave, how would Papa find us? At least this way the orphanage can tell him we were sent here. I promise I'll get you out of here, Jacob. It just can't be tonight. You're gonna leave me again? I'll never leave you longer than I have to. I'll be back tomorrow, okay? Exhausted. So we will 
talk about this in the morning. Now go to bed, Belinda. Last night wasn't the first time you sneaked out, was it? I want to know where you went and why you stole food. Members of a family need to trust each other. So? I don't understand. What do you want? I have to stay here. If you don't want me, I can find work somewhere. I'm a hard worker. All I ask for is food and a bed. Belinda, I want you. My family wants you. And I'm not going to send you to work when you should go to school and be a child. I have been a child for a long time. I'm worried about her safety. I'll keep a close watch over her, of course, but I can't stay up all night every night. And if she's determined to sneak out, she's going to just do it. Instead of trying to stop something you can't stop, just let her go. Let her go? Have you lost your mind? You didn't let me finish. Let her go and follow her. See what this is all about. It may be nothing. She could be sneaking out just to prove she doesn't have to stay with you. Or... Or it could be something serious. Something dangerous, even. There's only one way to find out. Nothing like this in a long time. How are you doing? He hit me again. I didn't do nothing. I just didn't move fast enough and Mrs. Pettis told me to fetch something. Jacob, I'll get you out of here just as soon as I can. I hope that's soon, Lindy. Good night, Jacob. Why have you been sneaking out to see Jacob? And why are you bringing him food? We need the truth now, Belinda. It'll be better for you to get it all out. Jacob looks thinner than when I saw him the last time. Are Mr. and Mrs. Pettis treating him right? We need the real story. It's not a story! It's true! They're being real mean to Jacob! What's Jacob's last name? Is it Marshall? Is Jacob your brother? Belinda, why did you keep this a secret? At the other towns, the train stopped it. I saw brothers and sisters having a real hard time. Those folks only want one kid. Your mothers feel bad about breaking up families. So don't take any kid. I would have taken both of you, Belinda. You 
say that now, but you know you wouldn't have wanted more than one kid. Jacob had a better chance on his own. Why? Because he's younger. Folks want younger kids. Once you get to be around my age, it's harder to find people that take them. You need to go to bed. But I promise you, Belinda, we will go over there first thing tomorrow morning, and I will Ms. talk. Miss Lay, may I speak to you outside, please? Go to bed. I was going to tell her that we'll go get her brother out of there. That's why I stopped you. I didn't want to get her hopes up. So you think that I won't do what I said? No, I know you'll try to do exactly what you said. But when Mr. and Mrs. Pettis took Jacob, they got legal guardianship. And unless we can prove that he's being seriously hurt, no court will interfere. So you're not going to do anything? Oh, I'll go over there tomorrow and check the situation out. But i got to be careful how I handle this. I don't want to make Hank so mad that he takes it out on Jacob. Well, I'm going over there with you. No, you're not. You can't stop me. You be at my office at 8 o'clock. Sharp. I won't wait a minute longer. I'll be there. You are an amazing girl, and I love you very much. Just want to see the boy, Hank. We know you've been mistreating him. <laughs> you can watch your mouth, young woman. Let us see the boy, and we'll leave. Come on out of here, boy. Stay right here. Jacob, I'm Sheriff Tyler, and this is Mrs. LaHaye. Lindy's foster mama? Yes. Your sister's very worried about you, Jacob. She believes that Mr. and Mrs. Pettis aren't feeding you enough, and that they're working you too hard. Is that true, Jacob? Don't be afraid of him. We won't let him hurt you. Has he laid a hand on you, Jacob? Are they feeding you enough? You said you were going to bring him to church. Why haven't you done that? That's enough. You got your answer, Sheriff Nagip. Ha! I wanted to ask them why they aren't sending Jacob to school. Well, no law says they have to. But... Even parents, let alone guardians, don't have to send their kids to school. That's just wrong. Jacob needs an education if he's going to have any kind of future. Yeah, unless we can persuade Pettis of that, Jacob's future's on that farm. You don't understand how desperately Belinda and Jacob love each other. What it means to be separated from someone you love that deeply. I don't think you've ever felt that way about anyone in your life. Or else you wouldn't let that happen. Linda, I'm sorry. Sheriff Tyler and I talked to Mr. Pettis, but Jacob's gonna have to stay there for now. Our papa's gonna come for us someday. And he's gonna get Jacob away from that terrible man. And he's gonna take both of us home with him. For those of you in the second grade primer, please open your books to page 13. For the rest of you, you can continue doing your multiplication tables. Belinda, will you open your book to page 13? I would like for you to read aloud. The t tales of Pete, Peter, Rab. 
Grab it. You're doing very well. Go on. I can't read it. You can try. I don't want to. All right, class. That's enough for today. We will pick up tomorrow where we left off. You're excused. She doesn't want to be part of a family. She really resents me. Maybe even hates me. You and I didn't take to each other at first, remember? And I am so ashamed about how I resented you. It's perfectly natural. You lost your mama and didn't want me to take her place. Just like with your papa and me. I had lost my husband and I didn't want Clark to take his place. But then you fell in love with papa and things changed. I fell in love with both of you. But Belinda has so much anger in her. She's had it much harder than I did. Which is exactly why she needs you. Even if she's not ready to admit it right now. She needs what you have to give. But I have so little to give. I can barely keep enough food on the table for Maddie and me. Those other parents that adopted those children, they have so much to offer. You will leave Belinda a legacy of character. And of a love for others. And of faith. That's a beautiful legacy. That's the kind of legacy that lasts. Well, we've gone through all the books at school, and all the books here, and you can't seem to find anything that you're interested in. There must be something that you want to be able to read. Well... When my pa dropped me and Jacob off at the orphanage, he pinned this letter to my dress. I was supposed to give it to him, but I kept it. Why? These are his last words to us. They're important. I just know it's gonna say how much he loved us and wanted to keep us. And how he'll come back for us someday. Will you read it to me? Oh. Belinda, this letter is private. It's between you children and your papa. I can teach you how to read it. Okay, I'll learn how to read. But will you just read it to me now? To whom it may concern, this is to certify that the biological father and only legal guardian of Belinda and Jacob Marshall, freely and of his own will, requests that the Children's Aid Society provide a home for his minor children until they are of age. Samuel Marshall promises not to interfere in any arrangements the Children's Aid Society may make for them. Sincerely, uh, your father put his mark. Is that all? I'm so sorry, Belinda. I know it must have been very difficult for your father to give up you and Jacob. must have broken. Is it valuable? Yes. I'm sorry. It's just that my mother gave it to me a long time ago, and it is very dear to me. Let me help you look for it. Thank you. You know, it's starting to get dark out here. We can look again tomorrow. There's no point. It's gone. You ought to be out there, Sheriff. Oh, I'm not much of a dancer. 
Good job. Excuse to wrap your arms around a pretty girl. Why don't you ask your dad? Maybe I will. And I love that cobbler. This is a hey. May I have this dance? the one your mother gave you, but I thought maybe it might make you feel better. Zach, this looks like a real gold. Well, if it isn't, I gotta take it. There's enough room for two pictures, Maddie's and Belinda's. I can't accept this. Well, it's just a gift. It doesn't mean anything. That's just it. I could only accept an expensive gift like this if it did mean something. If it came from the man that I love. seem like God put us on this earth to have it easy. But he did put us here to love one another. I'm so ashamed of myself. I have two children at home to think of. And I'm acting like a child myself. You're not acting like a child. You're acting like a woman in love. I have to get home to the children. If there's anything your father and I can do to help. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Mrs. LaHaye? There's something I... I need to tell you. You asked me a while back why I care so much about Belinda. You see, she reminds me of someone. Someone you loved? Eleanor. Ellie. We grew up together. Her daddy was a town drunk. And when he wasn't passed out, he was just full of meanness. And he took it out on her. Nobody did anything? Now, then when I finally got big enough, I stood up to him. What happened? Well, let's just say he didn't hit her again. Did you marry Ellie? I was going to. What happened? Bank robbery. She wasn't a threat in any way. They didn't have to kill her, but they did, and, and they got away with it. They're alive, and, and Ellie is dead. Just 
just no rhyme or reason to it. Zach, I'm so sorry. I understand your bitterness toward God. I felt the same way once. My husband, Willie, was the sheriff in the town that we lived in. He was killed in the line of duty. How did it happen? Stupid, really. Darling! Then a saloon. I got into a fight. Lily went in to break up. Should have ended with nothing worse than a black eye or two and a broken nose, but... One of the men pulled out a gun. He was dead by the time I got there. I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye. I'm so sorry, Missy. You must have loved him very much. With all of my heart and soul. We're just about done. Sure goes fast when you're not doing it alone. Puppies won't wake up. Jacob and me. There was a baby girl. Jenny. I'm so sorry, honey. I tried to take care of baby Jenny and to keep her warm and to get her milky, even though we didn't have much money. How old were you, Belinda? Me? Hey. That is far too big a responsibility for a little girl. <laughs> Wasn't anyone else to do it. What happened to Jenny? That's sick. But we couldn't afford a doctor. So one day she just stopped breathing and I tried to do what Mama told me to do, like with the puppy. But it didn't work. It's all my fault Jenny died. Belinda, listen to me. Sometimes things happen. Terrible things, and there is nothing that we can do about it. I don't understand. Yes, I do. How can you? Because I lost a baby, too. Her name is Kathy. She was so very precious to me. What happened to her? 
she just stopped breathing. I don't know why. One minute she was in her cradle asleep, and then the next, she just... It wasn't your fault. I felt like it was. I felt like there must have been some way that I could save her. Just like you thought that you could save Jenny, but we couldn't. It was out of our hands. It was in God's hands. I couldn't save Jenny. And you couldn't save Kathy. But we can save Jacob. I'm going to bring you and Maddie home now. Then what? Then I'm going to get Jacob. Something wrong? I think Mrs. Lahey might be in trouble, and it's all my fault. I made her go out there. Go where? To get Jacob. But she's all alone, and that man is so mean. I'm afraid he might hurt her. You go on home, Belinda. But, but Sheriff. I'll take care of this, but I can't worry about you too. So go on home and stay there. Anything happens to Mrs. Lahey? Nothing's gonna happen to her. I won't let it. All right, what is it this time, Mrs. Lahey? Where's Jacob? None of your damn business, that's where. Let him come with me. He needs to be with his sister. Surely you can see that, Mr. Pennis. All I know is I got a good hand. You can hire someone. A grown man can do much more work than that little boy can. Men don't work for nothing. That boy does. Search your heart, Mr. Pettis. I know that somewhere deep inside you must feel something for him. Yeah, now that's where you're wrong, Mrs. LaHaye. You are a cruel and selfish man, and I am not going to let Jacob spend one more day in your power. Well, just what do you think you can do about it? Huh? You come onto my land threatening me, holding my rights to do whatever I want to you. Even the law can't say otherwise. Let go of me! Let her go, Hank. So nobody tells me what to do on my own land. You let her go. <laughs> you can't arrest me for defending myself on my own property. If we weren't on your property, you'd be heading to jail right now. Either way, you shoot anyone here or anywhere else, I will arrest you. We'll let the courts decide whether it's right or wrong. Miss LaHaye, come on. But what about Jacob? Can't do anything about him right now. Whoa. Whoa. He shot at you. Why didn't you arrest him? Well, that was just a warning shot. If he wanted to hit me, he would have hit me. You were trespassing on his land, Missy. By law, you should have been the one arrested. Where's Jacob? I'm sorry, Brenda. But we couldn't get him away. Why not? We don't have the legal right. What about Jacob's rights? Look, I am not giving up. I promise you that I will get Jacob back. Stay here. Belinda! Belinda! She's gone. She took all of her things and she's not coming back this time. Well. She won't leave without Jacob. I'll go to the Pettis place. I'm coming. No. Go home and wait for her. husband sees you, he'll run you off again. I think Belinda might have come for Jacob. You're wrong. He's in the barn feeding the cow. Well, I'd like to check if you don't mind.
What are you doing back here? The boys run off. All right, everybody, let's gather around. I have no idea where these kids might be going, so we'll go in different directions. I'll go north, Clark, you go east, Anderson, you go south, Missy, you go west. Pastor, if you don't mind, go back to the church in case the kids seek refuge there. Let's everybody meet back here by sundown. Let's go by Anderson. Right, Pass. That's it. Take the county road. You're going to make All right. Zach's right, Missy. It's too dark to look for him now. We have to wait until dawn. Belinda's a smart, tough little girl. She'll find shelter for her and Jacob. What if there is no shelter where they are? What if there's a wash? They don't know that it's not safe because of flash floods. No, it'll be no help to them if you get lost, too. Maddie needs you. Stay with him. We'll talk to more parishioners. Arrange for a search party to go out in the morning. We'll stay with you tonight, Missy. I'll stay with you. I'm so scared, Papa. Stay here till the rain stops. What do we do then? Where do we go? Don't worry, okay. We got a plan. Melinda! Jacob! Give those little children the strength and the courage to make it through this dark night and give us the faith to accept your will. Amen. I don't know if you can hear me or not, God. I'm not sure I even believe in you. But I know I can't find those children without you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Jacob! Melinda! Yeah. 
safe now. I'm gonna get you back. Back to Mr. Pettis? No, sir. Home to Missy's. Why don't you come inside? Zach. There are no words that can begin to describe the depth of my gratitude. Not unnecessary, Missy. So, what happens now? Does Jacob have to go back to Pettis? No. Now, we talked on the ride back, and he admitted to me that Hank's been beating him and practically starving him. And we'll tell Hank if he doesn't voluntarily give up his legal guardianship of him, I'll arrest him. I don't think that Belinda and Jacob should be separated again. I would like for him to come and live with us. Well, I think the Children's Aid Society will go along with that. I can't believe that you found them in that storm all by yourself. I wasn't alone out there, Missy. What do you mean, I thought that you rode out by yourself? Yeah, I searched for hours. Calling them over and over again, it got to the point where I felt hopeless. I knew I would never find them on my own. So I prayed to God for help. Oh, Zach. And then I was absolutely silent, and in that silence, I heard what I couldn't hear while I was riding, calling them. What? child crying the thing is, is even standing still I shouldn't have heard that little voice over the storm maybe it wasn't Jacob's voice you heard you spoke to God and he answered you with a miracle you start coming here, Paul? When your mama died, this is where I said goodbye. How do you do that? How do you let go of someone you love? When we love someone, that love doesn't die when they do. That stays in our hearts forever. But we do have to say goodbye to the life we share with them on with a new life. A chance at happiness. Willie would want me to be happy. Mm-hmm. I know that. He'd approve of Zach. He's a good man. Hmm. But it feels like a betrayal. It isn't. And it doesn't matter how I tell you that. You're gonna have to feel it, Missy. I think I'm going back to the house. You want to sit here for a while? Hmm. I will always love you, Willie. But I am finally ready to be happy again. Have that locket? Why, yes, right here. 
you still want to give it to me, I'll take it. But you said you couldn't accept a gift like that. Unless it came from someone that I loved. Will you put it on me, Zach? Gladly. There's something else I couldn't do unless it was with the man I love. <laughs>